Since variables came out in 2023 config, the biggest question everyone's been asking is, how do we use them to change from light mode to dark mode like that? That's what we're going to do today. As usual, we've got a link to the Figma file we're going to be using in the description so you can follow along. Let's jump in. So in the file, you have this design. We're just going to use this really simple design and some simple colors to get you to understand the concept. And then you could go ahead and use it on your fancy files and your fancy designs. So what we're going to do is we're going to create these variables, both in light and dark mode, and then apply them to our design. I know another problem a lot of people are having is that their designs are already created. And now just thinking about applying variables kind of backwards to all of them sounds like a huge task, but it's actually not that bad. So let's do it together. Step one, create the variables. Click on your local variables and then create our first color variable. We'll just call it background. Then we can click on the little color picker and to get the eyedropper, I know we usually use I, but in this case it won't work. So you just need to use control and C, control on a Mac as well, not command. I'll pick this color over here. Great. So this is going to be our light color value. Let's add another mode over here. I'll call this one light mode and this one dark mode. And then let's click on our picker again, command C and just select this. What's going to happen is when we apply this background color to anything on our design, if it's on the light mode, it's going to use this one. If it's on the dark mode, it's going to use this one. So we'll go ahead and do that for all of them. For our label colors, we do have a little slash and that will create a group for us in our variables. So create variable color label slash primary. So you see it jumps into there. Control C, Control C. So to keep adding into this group, I can just click over here on the toggle and move into the label group, create a new one. So now we've set up all of our variables. And again, this is just a quick example on your files. You may have loads more colors, a whole system to do this in. I do have a video going through how I set up my own color system. And I do show there how you can quickly change styles into variables as well. So make sure to check that out if you have to do that. Now let's assign these variables. So again, this is showing an example where I already have a design and I'm using loads of colors over here. If they were assigned to styles, I could do that that way as well. But right now they're just hexadecimals. And now I need to assign these to the variables. So some of these are really simple, right? If I select my frame, I can see in the selection colors, every single color that's under here. And I can also do that to the whole page if I need to. Click on my canvas and command A. So I'm selecting everything. You can see I have those selection colors as well. So you can do this to your entire file at once. Select my frame, look over here, and let's assign these to their appropriate variables. So starting off with the yellow one, I know that that's secondary. Clicking on here, I know that this is primary. I'm going to skip the white for a second. Um, this one is my V1. This one is secondary label. This one is primary and this one is primary V2. The reason I skipped the white one is it's because it's a little different. And the other ones, there's only one kind of color that is that color. But with white, if we look at our light colors, label negative, so for example, this send button or sunshine flowers over here, these are a color I use for text that sits on top of a darker color. So it's a negative label color. So that's white but my background is also white. So if I click on here and assign all of these white colors to the same variable, we're gonna have issues. So the way to combat that is to just assign them separately, right? So if I click on this frame, for example, I can assign the fill color, not in the selection colors, the fill color itself to background because that's the background, right? And if you had multiple pages, you could select all of them and do it that, that way as well. So I'll assign this one to background and then I'll assign the rest of the white ones. I'll just click on this target to see who they are and I can double check. Yeah, I can see it's selecting these send labels, these icons and this. I'll assign them to negative. Perfect. Now, in this case, you could say that they swap to black the same way anyway. So why does it matter? But it really does matter matter okay you can see that i'm also using kind of semantic -y names i'm not really using just like green or yellow i'm actually using names that have a meaning again i have a whole video going through that but it's really best practice to do it that way you're protecting yourself if one day 
Right now, these are the same, white and black, white and black, but then what if someday the negative color actually changes to something else? So then you can change the set one and you don't need to go and you know dissect them and disconnect things from one another. So now that we've done that, that's basically it. Okay, it's as simple as that. If we select this frame, you can see in the layers panel that there is this button that changes the variable mode. So right now it is set to automatic, which is light mode, but I can just select light mode. When I do that, you can see that in the layers panel, it now has a little label next to it that says light mode. I'm going to duplicate this frame. So I'm selecting it, command D to duplicate it. Now, instead of light mode, I'm gonna change it to dark mode. Yeah, it just changed automatically. So that was super simple, right? Now I wanna just go through what auto does. So there's a bit of a tricky thing here which you need to understand. When we were selecting the mode, remember we had three options. So we had light mode and dark mode, which we set up, but then we also had auto. So auto means that it's going to let its parent select what it is. You've probably seen loads of videos of people drawing a section around multiple frames and then just changing the section rather than going frame by frame. So that's what this means, right? Let's set this one to automatic. So it's gonna be on light mode because that's the first mode, so it's automatic. So you can see in the layers panel as well, this one doesn't have a label next to it, this one does. I'm gonna change the name of this one to auto and this one to light. So on this frame, I selected a mode myself, light mode. On this frame, I kept it on automatic. Now, if I click on my page, so I'm clicking on my canvas, I'm clicking on absolutely nothing. The canvas is essentially the parent of these two frames, right? Because they're not inside of anything else, they're just inside of this page. So the page is the parent in this situation. If I click on it, you can see that next to the word page, I do have the button to change variable mode. If I change this to dark mode, look what happened. So this frame, because it was automatic, it's gonna listen to whatever its parent is doing and change. This one stayed light because I told it to be light and it cannot defy me. There is also another element to this where, for example, if I select this button, right, it's right now, if I look at the layer section, I can change the variable mode here and this is set to auto as well because the page is telling it to be dark mode, it's on dark mode, but I can override that and say, you will stay light mode. Yeah, so you see this button doesn't look like this one, it looks like this one because it's using light mode colors, yeah? So it's kind of simple, but there's also intricacies that you just need to be aware of. They're not difficult to use, they're just things you need to be aware of so you can make the decision on what works best for your design and your purpose. And that was it really short video again today just to show you how you can use light mode and dark mode on a simple example and how you can use these skills in your own files and in your own fancy designs and make super crazy things i hope you enjoyed please like and subscribe leave a comment below let me know how you're getting on what other videos you want to see see you at the next one